Hey, right, what's happening, y'all? It's me coming at you again with another vid. Well, Adrian, the problem broner, TKOs Ashley Theofane in the ninth round, which uh, happened to be in a very, very odd, odd, odd situation and how that fight ended. Um, before I get to that, I have to say this is probably, <laughs> this was actually always a mismatch, okay? Uh, where do I begin? Uh, in the first four rounds, obviously, Adrian Broner was controlling the action um, due to the fact that he was fighting flat-footed, uh, which he does normally. Uh, but he was um, more defensive, keeping his head, you know, his uh, guard up um, than usual. And he had, um, was uh, wearing down Thea Payne, walking him down with some vicious body shots, even with some uppercuts when he's get, getting inside and with some short right crosses and whatnot. Um, so yeah, so, but, um, you know, to really describe this fight, this was very, very, um, uh, mildly entertaining. And the reason why I say that is because in the first four rounds, that's where all the, uh, you had the, the O's and the A's and all the, uh, exciting moments that took place in the first four rounds, but it kind of did die down. The action did slow down a little bit. Obviously that was, um. Uh, that's uh, due to Broner taking a break between the rounds after he was loading so much, trying to get Theo Payne out of there in the uh, early rounds, particularly in the third round when he hit Theo Payne with a vicious right cross to the face and had him pent up to the corner. And he spent so much energy um, trying to load up and get him out of there. But, you know, knowing Theo Payne, he has never been stopped in his career um, up to that point until now. Um but the one thing that really stood out is that Theo Payne was hitting Broner. He had some success in the sixth and seventh round, I believe. I only gave him two rounds in this fight, which was which were those two rounds. And he was hitting Broner with some body shots, hitting him with some right cross, you know, hit, you know, gave him some feints, whatnot in the inside, and he stood in toe to toe with them in some occasions. But given up given that that type of uh success that Theo Payne was having, he didn't have the power to disrupt Broner, Broner's timing. He didn't have anything to disrupt him, and Broner just <laughs> walked through his power shots. He walked through his punches. It just had no effect at all, and that would explain why he only has 11 KOs out of um, 39 uh, victories. So 39 victories or 46 pro fights. So it was, um, yeah, this was, a you know, pretty, again, this was a mismatch, and... Looking at Broner's um, frame and physique, this guy looked like he was well over 160 pounds, a borderline middleweight. And we all know that yesterday he didn't make the weight. Um, he was off by 0.4 pounds, and he didn't bother trying to sweat it off, which it left a lot of people in shock and alarm. But I'll get to that in a second. But in the ninth round, this is where the TKO happened. Um, Broner hit um, Theo Payne with a, a inside right. Started him with some barrage shots, whatnot, and, you know, started to swarm him. And then there was a a punch, a left hook to the body where Theo Payne was crouching. It appeared to be a body shot that really had um, Theo, I mean, oh, had Theo Payne, I'm sorry, had Broner hit Theo Payne with the shot that had him cr cringing in agony and pain to where he ran to the other side of the corner. And the referee thought that he was echoing or he was saying the words, I quit, I gave up. And then the referee waved the fight off. And <laughs> apparently, looking at the replay, what Theo Payne was arguing is that he got hit low below the cup. So if you look at the replay, apparently he did. And that <laughs> and that's where question, you know, some people would question whether that stoppage was bad or did even warrant it, or did the referee obviously the referee didn't um didn't um you know he missed that. So uh, yeah, um, honestly, if the fight were to have progressed, I mean, Broner would have won the fight anyway. I mean, again, he would have, he would probably, he was probably up on all the Georgia's judges scorecards anyway, so I will have to take a look at that. But other than that, um, AJ Broner, um, secures the win. However, since he did lose the title on the scales yesterday, he does not, re he does not, uh, win the WBA light, um, light welterweight title. So now the WBA will hold that title as vacant. Um, the top two contenders should be fighting for it, which is Michelle DiRocco and Mauricio Herrera. So now Mauricio Herrera, obviously, you know, he he is long overdue. He has been screwed <laughs> over time after time, over time after again. So uh, definitely a great opportunity for him to win it. And I, I would predict him to win it against um, DiRocco um, once, a D, 
once the WBA sanctions that fight. But uh, anyhow, going to the post fight, <laughs> the post fight interview, uh, well, the post fight, Adrian Broner looked right at Floyd Mayweather right after the fight, after the, um, well, after the uh, referee had waved it off. It seems like he was going to climb out of the ring to confront him face to face. <laughs> Floyd was, you know, he had a smile on his face and uh, Leonard Ellaby was right there laughing at him. So, uh, that Broner gave off a firing, um, you know, post uh, fight interview, um, uh, post fight interview speech in the ring, talking about, look, man, I come from the gutter. This is only paraphrasing. I, only, I came from the gutter, I, you know. I, I came from the gutter, dog. You know what I'm saying? I come from, the, you know, I came from the ground up. I ain't gonna let no grown man disrespect me. So, you know, we can get it right now. We can do it. So, in other words, he's calling out Floyd, you know, to come out of retirement and fight him. Now, some of us would. Um, would suggest that this is all, um, you know, this is all, you know, all uh, nothing but a publicity stunt or a promotion to get Floyd to come out of retirement for his 50 fight against Adrian Broner. Now, to be honest with you, if it is a ploy, would you care to watch it? Would you care to see it? I mean, obviously, Floyd has a legions of fans. Of course, they'll see it. But what about the casual who are, casual fans who are very upset by the uh fight of the century, quote unquote, and the uh, outcome of that. Well, not just the outcome, but the the climate overview of the, of the fight as far as the entertainment value is concerned. So, yeah, it's the casuals don't forget. So they I'm not sure if they would um, pay any more money to see a Floyd Mayweather fight after that incident. But uh, I don't know, man. I really don't know. Now, I will say this, though. Adrian Broner is a hell of an actor because he did sound genuine trying to promote that shit. So, uh <laughs> yeah. Now, where does uh, both fighters go from here? Uh, obviously, um, Adrian Broner does have a legal issue to, to resolve, so he has to resolve that next week. But I want to read you guys something, an interesting quote that I grabbed from um, the USA Today uh, via Boxing Junkie. Uh, this is a quote from Mike um, Mike Stafford, which is um, you know Adrian Broner, longtime trainer. He told the USA Today, he said, quote, it is what it is. It is what it is. I mean, the kid chose not to go on and abuse his body by trying to lose the weight. And hopefully the fans and sport, sport, sports writers understand that he's been through a lot and has a lot of things on his mind. Hey, I mean, we'll go on you know, and put on a good show tomorrow. Main thing is the fight's still on. And the kid will be ready to fight. So, end quote. I'll leave that there. To me, that's an indication that Adrian Broner's days at the 140-pound limit is done. Because if you look back at this, you know, if you look back at the the history of this, Broner's had problems making weight. And obviously the reason being is because he's always the bigger man going into fights against the little guys, even at uh, super featherweight. Uh, when he, um, you know, there was one point, as I mentioned in my earlier video, that he actually missed the weight for the first time at, and loses his title at the scales against uh, Vicente uh, Escobedo. Um, and then he moved up in weight. And, you know, he only had a few fights there at uh, 135, and then he moved up to 147, uh, whatnot. And then, you know, moved back down to 140, obviously. Then he moved, moved down to 140, I should say. Um, of course, in the second 140 fight, he had missed the weight against John John Molina Jr. And then he had trouble making weight, the catch weight against the Sean Porter fight. So... And now that he, we know that he missed weight yesterday, it just seems to me that he's truly a 147-pound fighter. And most of us would know that Adrian Broner is very limited at that weight. So, you know, he has limited um, skill set there. So, I mean, this is not to knock on Broner, but obviously we, you know, 147 is going to be a help. Uh, uphill for him to, you know, to compete in, you know, especially you have like some Earl Spence Jr. who wear out. From whom I heard actually, made, not saying made, made Adrian Broner cry and sparring, but I heard he really gave him so much that he can handle, even worse than what he, uh, Earl Spence Jr. did to Floyd in sparring. So that would uh, explain why Earl Spence was kicked out of Floyd's gym at one point because of that situation. But um, yeah, you got the likes of Keith Thurman, which these are much bigger natural guys. Um, you know, you got. Uh, Sammy Vasquez Jr., who's up and coming uh, prospect, who's now almost on the world stage level now. Uh, you know, you have uh, Kel Brook. So, I mean, there's a many, you know, there's a lot of t top welterweights there, you know, that Broner may have to um, go up against. So, yeah, yeah. Let me know what you think about this. Uh, care to comment, share, subscribe. Signing off. Peace.